The most famous spaceplane in history is undoubtedly the Space Shuttle, a vehicle capable of flying and operating in space but also of gliding through the atmosphere and landing on a more or less traditional runway. These vehicles, which combine the concepts of airplane and spacecraft, have been the focus of many engineering efforts in the last 20 years of the last century. In the 20th century, the United States and Russia developed a space plane, and later China also attempted to do the same. However, only the space shuttle was fully functional. Now, in 2024, we find ourselves with three well-known space planes and one that is about to become operational, the Dream Chaser. This is its story. Before discussing this new American space plane, it is right to briefly mention how such a vehicle works and why it is different from a traditional capsule that we are used to seeing astronauts return to Earth in. As mentioned earlier, the main feature of a space plane is its ability to maneuver both in the atmosphere and in space. While a capsule performs a ballistic re-entry, aiming at a specific entry point in the atmosphere that then coincides with a specific landing point, a space plane can glide in the atmosphere, offering several advantages, primarily related to reuse, since a glided re-entry on a traditional runway is theoretically less costly than a ballistic re-entry. For example, until the Dragon capsule from SpaceX, no capsule had ever been reusable. Moreover, the design of a space plane is more scalable and allows for the design of potentially larger vehicles. Regarding design, a space plane allows for more human-scaled vehicles given the position of the thermal shield and wings, but also a re-entry from space that occurs in a gentler and safer manner. In a space plane, most of the heat due to friction with the atmosphere is indeed dissipated by the thermal shield placed on the main body and not by the wings, which instead primarily serve to guide the vehicle in the atmosphere. We saw, for example, with a starship, which we might define as a hybrid between a rocket and a space plane, in which the aerodynamic appendages have just that task. This concept, that is, of delegating the main task of both friction and generating lift to the main body, is taken to the maximum in vehicles called lifting bodies, where the main body has a stockier design and a much larger surface area compared to the wings, which are fixed and thus it is precisely the main body that creates most of the lift. The shuttle was a lifting body, and even more so is the dream chaser. Quickly understanding why it still makes sense to build a space plane instead of a capsule, we move on to today's protagonist, the dream chaser. This space plane is designed by the company Sierra Space and will be launched into space for the first time in the spring of 2024 on a Ula Vulcan rocket with the goal of reaching the International Space Station. Initially, the Dream Chaser will not carry astronauts, although this is an upgrade planned for the future. Its initial purpose will simply be to resupply the space station, serving as a cargo mission. We do not yet know the exact date of the first launch. Despite the first flight of this Dream Chaser being scheduled only for 2024, its history dates back to the early 1990s, a period when the Space Shuttle had been active for a few years and seemed to be a vehicle projected towards the future. NASA began working on a project for a new small space plane called HL-20, intended exclusively for the transport of people, while the shuttle, with its large cargo bay, also transported entire satellites or even new modules of the International Space Station. This new space plane was nicknamed, for its purpose, a space taxi. In 1990, one of the objectives of this project, the HL-20, was to serve the space station Freedom, a completely American station that NASA was beginning to design in the late 1980s, but which was later integrated into the International Space Station in the late 1990s. This space plane attracted the interest of an American company called Space Dev, located in California and founded in 1997. Space Dev produced engines, satellite components, and was actively interested in space tourism, i.e., the full commercialization of spaceflight. Space Dev, for example, developed the hybrid engine for Spaceship One, the first version of the space plane by Virgin Galactic, with which suborbital tourist flights are now conducted. The project was then announced on September 20, 2004 under the name of Dream Chaser. The project continued quietly until 2008, when the company was completely sold to the Sierra Nevada Corporation, a large American group that deals with defense and space technologies. The group did not cancel the space project, but rather infused it with new resources and nominated it for NASA's newly created commercial crew program. 
This latter program was the American response to the cancellation of the Space Shuttle, a program, that is, to finance two private vehicles to transport astronauts to the International Space Station. Sierra Nevada Corporation and the Dream Chaser were selected in 2010 for the first phase of this program, receiving $360 million to begin the design of the space plane. However, in 2014, NASA selected only the Dragon capsule from SpaceX and the Starliner from Boeing for the second phase of the commercial crew program, deeming the Dream Chaser still too embryonic to meet NASA's demands. However, Sierra Nevada Corporation did not give up on the idea of flying its space plane, and in 2016 it was selected by NASA for the second phase of the Commercial Resupply Service or CRS-2, the program for cargo resupply of the International Space Station, to be carried out with commercial vehicles. The Dream Chaser was then adapted in a cargo version to perform at least six resupply missions to the space station. After three more years of further design, the construction of the first Dream Chaser cargo, renamed Tenacity, officially began in October 2019, with a launch that was initially scheduled for 2021. In 2021, Sierra Nevada Corporation divided its space activities, moving almost all of them into a new fully owned company called Sierra Space which now also manages the program of this space plane. When this vehicle launches for the first time to the International Space Station, this is just the perfect time to subscribe, if you haven't done so yet. Now, let's delve deeper into the vehicle itself. Why is this space plane so interesting? Let's start with the exterior. The Dream Chaser is divided into two parts. A main body, the actual space plane, and a service module called, Shooting Stars, that is not recovered upon re-entry to Earth. The main body is 9 meters long, 2 meters high, and 5 meters wide in the configuration with the wings folded for the launch phase. Unlike, for example, the Space Shuttle, the Dream Chaser is launched inside the fairing of the Vulcan rocket to improve aerodynamic efficiency. Given also that the reduced size of this vehicle would still have necessitated a launch inside a classic rocket to fit within the Vulcan rocket's fairing. However, there is a need to fold the wings of the Dream Chaser. The space plane can bring up to 5,500 kilograms of material into orbit, both pressurized and unpressurized, as reported so far by Sierra Space. Of the 5,500 kilograms, about 1,000 kilograms of payload will be stored in the main structure, which can also be used to bring material back to Earth, thanks to the fact that it is a space plane. The atmospheric re-entry phase of the main spacecraft will be particularly gentle, as mentioned at the beginning, which is one of the main advantages of a space plane, in fact undergoing accelerations less than 1.5 grams, so as to be able to bring back very delicate materials, such as scientific experiments or possibly injured astronauts. This gravity acceleration value is interesting, especially when compared to the 4 or 5G that an astronaut undergoes during re-entry with a Soyuz capsule or a Dragon capsule. The remaining 4,500 kilograms of material are instead stored in the Shooting Stars module. Of these 3,200 kilograms are placed inside the module, while 1,300 can be placed outside in orbit. This module will also provide power and maneuverability to the spacecraft thanks to the solar panels and thrusters it is equipped with. At the end of the mission, However, it will be transformed into a shooting star, as its name suggests, and left to burn up in the atmosphere. In this way, the shooting stars module can also be used for the disposal of any waste produced by the International Space Station. Regarding the return from space, the designated landing runway for the six scheduled missions is the shuttle landing facility at the Johnson Space Center in Florida. But Sierra Space has stated that in the future the Dream Chaser can land on any runway capable of receiving a Boeing 737. Now let's return to talking about its structure. The main part, therefore the pressurized structure, is made of a special composite material, a special carbon fiber, and is the largest and most complex ever built of its kind in aerospace. The use of this material instead of traditional aluminum and titanium alloys brings advantages both in terms of weight, since, for example, this structure weighs only 1,000 kilograms, but also in terms of production costs, considering that it is a piece with complex aerodynamic surfaces and therefore requires very elaborate production techniques. Moreover, composites require less thermal protection compared to an aluminum structure. The tiles that make up the thermal shield are larger, more resistant, and lighter compared to, for example, 
those of the space shuttle, and the reduced number of tiles used also meets the requirements for protecting the spacecraft from impacts with micrometeorites and space debris, a very important and increasingly relevant topic. Also, the propulsion system of the Dream Chaser, used once in space, features some peculiarities. The space plane will utilize a set of endo reactors called vortex engines developed by Sierra Space. These engines are distributed throughout the Dream Chaser, with as many as 20 of them present. They operate in three different modes. The most advanced produces 490 newtons of thrust. While this might not seem like a lot, these engines are also part of the RCS, reaction control system, of the vehicle and thus need to be capable of producing fine adjustments in the orientation of the space plane as it approaches the International Space Station. The engines require only minimal thrust to slightly alter the vehicle's orientation. The propellants will burn propane and nitrous oxide and will utilize regenerative cooling technology through a coaxial double vortex within the combustion chamber. This approach opens a small window into this subject. In a space reactor, indeed, the reaction between fuel and oxidizer generates a significant amount of heat. This heat can often be excessive for the engine structure itself, which could only withstand a few seconds before collapsing. Therefore, it's necessary to use some kind of cooling system, and one possibility is using the oxidizer as a coolant. This technique also has the benefit of preheating the oxidizer, improving combustion efficiency. A major peculiarity of the vortex engines used by Sierra Space is also the behavior of the oxidizer and fuel inside the combustion chamber of the engine. The oxidizer enters from the base of the chamber to create a cold ascending vortex that lines the inner walls of the engine. Once it reaches the upper extremity, the oxidizer descends in a second vortex at the center of the chamber. The fuel is injected into this second vortex. Thus, the combustion phase is confined to the inner vortex, ensuring an optimal mixture of fuel and oxidizer and a steady, stable combustion. This architecture thus allows for a simple, lightweight, reliable engine that is easy to manage and offers significant economic advantages. As mentioned at the beginning, the Dream Chaser by Sierra Space will be used to resupply the International Space Station for at least six missions, which are currently already confirmed. However, there are no confirmations yet on what will happen afterward. Therefore, if these flights proceed as planned, it's plausible that they will continue as has happened previously with other capsules, such as the Dragon capsule, for example. Furthermore, Sierra Space is collaborating on the Orbital Reef project being built by Blue Origin, which is also funded by NASA. This station will feature expandable modules also constructed by Sierra Space, and the Dream Chaser in its cargo version will be used to resupply the station. This cargo version of the space plane, which we have been discussing, is called by Sierra Space District of Columbia 100, but the company is working on a modified version called District of Columbia 200, which will be capable of transporting astronauts to low Earth orbit. It is not yet known if they will make it to the International Space Station, but they will definitely make trips to Blue Origin's orbital reef. To date, we have very few confirmations and little information on this new updated version, but we know that there will be an update in the design of this new space plane with a greater width and therefore more volume available. There will certainly be four wings instead of two, as well as at least four windows for observing the exterior. We still don't even know if what has been presented so far is an official design, but once the first cargo missions to the International Space Station are performed, it's likely that Sierra Space will reveal more. As I mentioned at the beginning, this Dream Chaser is currently the only civilian spaceplane in development in the world, if we do not consider the Starship, which is not exactly a traditional spaceplane. It is not, however, the only operational spaceplane currently. In fact, there are two similar vehicles, at least in size, to the Dream Chaser that have already flown in orbit, but their goal is military. The first of these vehicles is the X-37B, built by Boeing and used by the American Space Force for military missions for several years. This space plane has been launched in the past with various rockets, including, for example, the Atlas V by ULA and recently has been launched with the Falcon 9 by SpaceX. It spends several months, if not years, in orbit to test new technologies, release satellites, or function as an Earth observation station. Similarly, the Chinese have been operating a space plane for two years about which very little is really known and which has already flown into space at least twice. 
Not even an official name has been declared and for now the vehicle is called Shenlong, which was the name of a previous prototype. However, it is known that the dimensions should be practically identical to those of the American 1037B. A fourth space plane is being built by India and they recently tested a landing maneuver after releasing it at high altitude with a helicopter. This space plane is expected to be used in a few years, primarily for military purposes, but India has also promised applications for civil use. There are also different space planes currently under development, especially in Europe, which are also called space planes and equipped with aerodynamic appendages, thus not having the ability to control their landing on a runway on Earth. The most famous and the most advanced in design is certainly the Space Rider, designed by the European Space Agency with a significant Italian contribution. It is a sort of hybrid between a space plane and a capsule. The goal is to carry scientific experiments into space and expose them to microgravity conditions, then bring them back to Earth with a controlled, glided re-entry, but concluding with a splashdown. We have reached the conclusion of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any further questions, do not hesitate to ask them in the comments and remember to subscribe to our channel.